Five months ago, Kara lost her mom to COVID. This is very real. This is very hit very close to home. It's something our family has been walking through, and Kara especially. And it's you and me, babe, whatever comes. Knowing bigger hands are holding us. And the greatest days are ahead of us. Growing in love, Growing in love. learning to be a better us. Hi there, so glad you've joined us for A Better Us. Welcome to our home. You know, it's been said one of the most important things you can do on this earth is to let people know they are not alone. Mm. And this is especially true when either you or your spouse are going through a really hard time. Yeah. In today's program, Drs. Les and Leslie Parrott tell us how we can best support our spouse mm -hmm. after a traumatic event. And some of our regulars on the show have definitely been through a difficult season. And they will candidly open up their lives to reveal how they've helped each other walk through mm -hmm. it. Yes, this is a very special episode. Mm -hmm. Also, authors and relationship experts Bill and Pam Farrell will share the importance of being sensitive to the subtle ways God gives mm -hmm. us wisdom in marriage. Being open to hear his voice on the inside. Mm -hmm. He's definitely speaking to us if we're truly mm -hmm. listening. Yeah. And spending time with us in the kitchen will be our kitchen couples, CFL football legend Mike Pinball Clemens and his wife Diane, and youth and children's ministers Eric and Kara Maines. This is going to be a meaningful show, yeah. so stay with us. You know, every marriage, no matter how good it is, eventually bumps into something bad. And when that happens for your spouse, when something is jolting, maybe it's the loss of a loved one, a parent, or, or what have you, or maybe some physical illness, when right. that person encounters that bad thing, that's when the true test of your love and your marriage is on the table. That's right, because you love someone, but it can often be a mystery. How can I show them I love them in a way that truly meets their needs? Here's the thing. Don't underestimate just the ministry of your presence in their life. You're not going to withdraw just because they're going through a darker time. You're not going to even pretend that you know how to fix it, but you're going to stay fully connected to right. them. You're going to hear their raw emotions about that and absorb those and accept them in the midst of it while it's still a mess and maybe it's not all wrapped up yet and we don't know where we're headed. But ministry of presence is huge. It's one thing we have the privilege of doing in marriage. And then one other thing I would add to that is tender touch mm -hmm. on top of that. Sometimes when you don't know what to say, it's yeah. just a gentle touch on the shoulder that really can speak volumes right. in the midst of loss or trauma. So don't feel like, oh, I got to be a psychologist. I got to figure right. out how to be a counselor right. in this context. No, no, no. You just be you and make sure you're open to listening and that you're fully present. And don't forget about those tender touches. Well, it's great to hear from Drs. Les and Leslie Parrott, always mm -hmm. with some great advice. And we are here in our kitchen, our home kitchen here, hon, with That's our it. kitchen couples. Yeah. We've got Mike and Diane, and we have Eric and Kara. Mm -hmm. And th this is kind of a, a tough one to talk about because we all have different yeah. traumatic events that happen yeah. in our lives. And, and how do you walk with your spouse through that? Mm -hmm. I know, Anne, after your ca cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. a couple years back, uh, it was uh, really difficult for me to know, wh what do I do? Yeah. How, how do I role? walk yeah. with you? Because this, this is happening. I can't fix it. It's not the kind of thing that I can try to handle and, and, and fix for you. And so... I, my default mode was trying to, to try to be a kind of a cheerleader, yeah. like it's going to be okay kind of a thing. Well, I remember driving to my very first chemo session in the car, and you're sitting there, you're driving me early in the morning, and you're saying, everything's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. This is all going to work out. It's going to be fine. And I had to stop you. And I said, honey, I don't need you to be my cheerleader right now. Mm -hmm. I said, I just need you to be with me mm -hmm. and to hold me and to, to walk this journey with me. You know, I know all of those things in my heart that God's got me and God's in control. What I need from you is just your presence. Yeah, so that's kind be of with me. very helpful for me to, to say, yeah, okay, sometimes you don't know what do you need? Yeah. That's what she yeah. needs. And I tried yeah. to be that mm -hmm. throughout that journey. And you were that. You were that. You were amazing throughout that journey. That's awesome. Um, I know Eric and Kara 
this is something that you guys have just recently walked through. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this topic <clears throat> hits very real for us right now because this is something that we are currently walking through. Mm. Um, and I haven't felt that I've, I've been enough for Kara in this season, and it's hard. Mm. I'll do a little interjection here, honey. Is five months ago, Kara lost her mom to COVID. Mm. This is very real. This has very, hit very close to home. It's something our family has been walking through, and Kara especially has been walking through. Kara, you were pregnant with your second child mm -hmm. when you lost your mom. Yeah. So I was like 18 weeks pregnant, and um, uh, my mom let us know that she had been exposed to COVID. Uh. And we, we just finished getting done with COVID ourselves. We had COVID and, and uh, walked through it and all of that other stuff. And she phoned us to let us know that she was exposed. And so we told her all of the symptoms that we had experienced and for her not to worry. And, and she has such a high percentage of living and she shouldn't be worried that she can get through this. And so she, she, they were very confident that everything was going to be okay. And then um, she started to go downhill very quickly. And she was intubated the day before we found out we were having a girl. And we got the call that uh, she wasn't going to make it through the night. We drove there. My dad was already there. He was allowed in the room with her because he had, um, anyways, he had uh, healed from COVID. And so he was allowed to go into the room. And um, when we got there, they told us that we had to dress in full PPE. So we had gowns and masks and face shields and gloves and boots and the whole nine yards. And they said that you can't go into the room. And so we stood outside of her room looking through a window and they told us that she could hear us, uh, but obviously she couldn't respond. So over an iPad, we had an iPad sitting outside of the room and she had an iPad right beside her. And we got to talk to her and tell her how good she was doing and how she was fighting so hard. And I got to let her know that we were having a girl and that we were going to be naming our girl after my mom. There was just so much heaviness and things you would never experience and trauma of seeing your mom like that. And then <laughs> I go back and Eric, not knowing what to do or say. And then the following day, uh, my mom went to be with the Lord. And now we're just on that journey of healing from this. And Eric, he's just like <laughs> with, with such a such a tr such a great loss to our family, because Kara is my heart, and my, and my heart is broke, mm -hmm. and so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to talk to her. I didn't know how to make it better because I'm a fixer. I wanted to fix her, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but the ministry of being present mm -hmm. is what what we found out that is is what I can do is I can be present with her in that moment. And protecting, protecting me from possible hurts or what people might say or do or react. And so yeah. this teaching hits so close to home. And we just are so thankful that she is with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for Eric that he has been with me through it all. And, and what, a, what a year of ups and downs. There's been so many people who have lost so much in this season of COVID. And uh, we and just... especially to lose your mom to COVID when it's, when it's something, a topic that is so divisive in our world right now. Uh, I think it's important for us all to remember that real people have lost loved ones mm -hmm. and we need to just love each other. We need to just yeah. stand with each other and forget the divisiveness and just show love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. you did, Eric, is show love. That's all you could do. That's all you could do. Just the ministry of your presence. Love never fails. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you for yeah. for sharing that. Uh, that you're still walking one. through. And, still going uh, through. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. This this topic uh, 
really hits home. And maybe you're watching and you yeah. have something you're going through right now too. And we trust that you and, and your, your spouse. Uh, Come together. Don't let it push yeah. you apart. Bring and that ministry of, of presence. Yeah, yeah. Well, well stay yeah. with us because we do have more that are us coming up right after mm -hmm. this. You know, there's times you're just not sure what to do. And it's a great time to just shoot up a prayer that says, Holy Spirit, would you show me what to say? Show me what to not say. Show me what to do. Show me what to not do. So one of the great advantages of having a relationship with Jesus is that the Holy Spirit resides inside of us. And one of the things the Holy Spirit does is he gives you prompts on how to love your spouse. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is so interested in your marriage being a success, he's constantly feeding you ideas on how to love the one that you have married. We like to say that the Spirit is like the great decoder mm -hmm. because nobody knows your right. mate like God the Creator who made your mate. Right, and Galatians 5.25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And how this plays out in your everyday relationship with your spouse is, you know, there's times you're just not sure what to do. And it's a great time to just shoot up a prayer that says, Holy Spirit, would you show me what to say? Show me what to not say. Show me what to do. Show me what to not do. And I would tell you that some of the best times in Pam's and my relationship are those moments where we didn't know exactly what to say or do. We shut up that prayer and it became a magical moment. Uh, for instance, one of the things I love about Pam is she's a really creative individual. Like she is so much fun to live with because she's always come up with these creative ideas. Uh, but because of that, the gas gauge in her car has, uh, it's been more of an advisory instrument for you <laughs> right. than, than having any real authority. I run out of gas quite a bit is what he's trying to say. So I got the call one day, uh, Bill, gosh, I'm so sorry. I ran out of gas. I have an appointment a couple blocks up the street. Could you come rescue me? Now, guys, I don't know how you are, but I love being a hero to Pam. So those words, can you rescue me? I was like, yes, I can. And I was going to do the big heroic thing. So my plan was to get a gas can, put a little bit of gas in her car, drive her car to the gas station, fill it up, deliver it to her appointment, walk back to my car, be her big hero for the day. That's right. Well, I got to where her car was and the car is gone. So I realized this car cannot be stolen because it is out of gas. So I know, sure enough, the police have impounded her car. So I have to go up the street and say, Pam, we got to go. Your car's been impounded. We need to go get it out of the impound lot. And we got in the car and Pam just laid into herself. I can't believe I've done this. I'm like so blonde. I'm like blonde beyond my roots, blonde. I don't know why you married me. I always do forgetful things like this. And some of us guys are tempted to agree with statements <laughs> like that. But I said, God, can you help me say something different? And this thought crossed my mind. So I turned to her and said, Pam, if this is all it costs me to be married to you, it is well worth it. <laughs> now, that tank of gas cost me $178. But you know what? Um, we like to say that there's a favorite box of husbands. That's that red hot monogamy mm -hmm. uh, box they love to live in. Well, Bill, visited. yeah, several <laughs> calendar days in a row, red hot monogamy for that guy. <laughs> and sometimes it's really simple things. Like Pam was out running errands one day, and I was at home just doing some, some work, and this thought crossed my mind. You know, Bill, when Pam gets home, you should say, no, it's especially you. I went, well, that, that seems kind of strange. What is that all about? And then Pam came home and she said, hey, it's just me. I went, oh, no, it's especially you. And she went, what did you say? <laughs> and it became one of those moments in our relationship where Pam said, wow, he notices me. And I knew the Holy Spirit had fed me the line. So now I come home on purpose. Hey, it's, it's just me. Right. <laughs> Knowing that I'm going to get, no, it's especially you. Right. So there are those moments in your relationship where you're not exactly sure what to say or do, but the Holy Spirit's more than willing to tell you. So shoot up a prayer, show me what to say, show me what to do, show me what to not say, show me what to not do. All right, we're back in the kitchen with Mike and Diane and Eric and Kara. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always great being in the kitchen with yeah. our kitchen couples in our home kitchen, actually. Absolutely. The, mm -hmm. heart, the kitchen is the heart of the home. And yeah. this, is, this is where we share our hearts, yep. isn't mm -hmm. it? Right that's here true. in the kitchen. Not just the ones and on our mugs either. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, Shameless plug. I, you know what I was thinking? <laughs> yeah, really. I was thinking for some people, when you talk about listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, that might sound strange. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not familiar with what that's all about. What does that mm -hmm. mean? Basically, what it means is if you surrendered your life to Jesus, His Holy Spirit automatically comes mm -hmm. and resides in you and helps you in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. You just have to listen to his voice because he's right there. He's constantly speaking, guiding, persuading. And so it's just one of the beautiful aspects of having mm -hmm. God as the center of your life. Right. Yeah. Now, I think for guys especially, we, we get that moment of panic when your wife has just opened up her heart and shared something you know, deep. And, uh, and you're there, you know, okay, this is a moment, and I don't want to mess up this moment, <laughs> but I have no clue what to say. <laughs> you know, you, you've got nothing, but, but you know, God's maybe got something yeah. for you. Yeah. And, so, so. And, and we see that deer in the headlights, yeah. like, don't we? Yeah. 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 Okay. He doesn't know what to say to me right now. <laughs> and I, I've made mistakes of saying the wrong thing, and I still yes, you have. make those yeah. mistakes. But I, not I, as I, often, no. But I try to think, okay, that's what, like, as Bill says in his yeah. teaching there, is it, just shoot up that prayer and say, okay, in that moment yeah. of, of panic, Lord, what, what can I say that's actually going to help? Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so had, I don't know. Is yeah. this your experience, guys? Have you, have you run into this before? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm us I usually have plenty of words. <laughs> um, I have to be careful that the moment doesn't turn into an argument, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that is that's the real key. Yeah. And and uh, but you know the the, I, the big thing is is when we are concentrating on God and whether it be prayer, whether it be reading and something like that, uh, those, those words come right at the tip of our tongue, mm. right? And, mm. and, uh, uh, and, and, and it's not just the words themselves, right? You can say something without saying it, right? And, and so, you know, one of the things that we've learned is that when you don't know what to say, Right. Mm. Just hug. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good body language. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, yeah. and uh, but yeah. but really trying to 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 listen and, yeah. and, and be aware of yeah. her thoughts and her feelings as, as we go through things, um, I find is much easier as, as you as you move through. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, you uh, develop good <clears throat> habits, hopefully, and, and, along the way. Mm -hmm. And she wants me to be right. right? So, <laughs> so, so if I'm just a little right, she don't give it to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she wants me to get it right. <laughs> and it kind of takes the pressure off when you like stop for a moment and you're like, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need wisdom in this moment. Like, especially with like walking through the loss of my mom and just big things in our lives. I'm sure Eric, <laughs> there's a lot of times he doesn't know what to say. And I think this is where that comes into play. So yeah, many in, times. in our walk with God and our walk with our spouse, it, it's just, it creates a new opportunity that you can figure out to, how to acknowledge God in that yeah. in that in that in that situation you know grandma's one of grandma's favorite verses is Proverbs 3 5 and 6 yeah. trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path and so that's it's it. just a new way, opportunity to acknowledge God even in the way that I talk to my wife mm -hmm. God I, I need your help in how, how to word this, please. And let, let's figure that out together. I know, I know. Oh, you want to say something? I was just going to say, I, I find myself always praying for my husband, mm -hmm. but praying that God would give him wisdom and discernment, mm -hmm. right, in every situation, mm -hmm. so that we don't have to walk down that path of, you know, yeah. being um, at at, at odds. At odds, right? Sure. So I always pray for his wisdom and his understanding so that when we do have things that we need to talk about, things that are difficult, mm -hmm. that God speaks to him, mm -hmm. right? And the, because he's supposed to be the head of the house mm -hmm. and he leads and I, if he's leading me, mm -hmm. then I'm going to submit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And not submit in a bad way, no. mm -hmm. but I'm going to submit and it's going to make everything that much easier for us mm -hmm. to walk through together. Mm -hmm. Well, when I think about her first, right, and think about what's best for her first, it, it, it's much easier for her to defer to me, mm -hmm. right? And well, so we try to try to make sure powerful. that yeah. that's... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's like you said, shooting up that prayer to the Lord saying, okay, God, what do I say now? This is a very... 
uh, unique situation, awkward situation, mm. potentially hurtful situation. Right, yeah. What? Do, how do I speak into it? I know I've shared this story before, um, but it's it's just so worth repeating. Uh, when I was going through chemo and lost all my hair, of course, and growing back nicely. Thank you, thank you. It's been about a year and a half now. I'm growing back, but uh, when I actually had no hair. And I, I was, I wasn't just bald. I was shiny skin bald. Mm. You know those bald people? Their, their, their head is actually shiny. That was me. And um, Ron, and for a woman, you know, I mean, it's, it's like adding insult to injury. First, you go through breast cancer, and then you lose all your hair. Like really? But uh, so after my showers, Ron would take lotion quite often and just massage Aww. my scalp for me. He did that so many times. And I remember the very first time he ever did it, I was sitting there just enjoying it and he finished. And then he leaned down and he kissed the Aww. bald skin and he whispered, I love this beautiful head. Aww. And that was exactly what I needed. I just started crying, and I reached up and I hugged him. I said, how did you know I needed to hear that? <laughs> it must have been the Lord. I it was, that. because you know what? That's Sometimes awesome. we just need God's mm -hmm. insight right. into how to speak into exactly what our spouse needs yeah. at that moment. And he's faithful, and he'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more connected we are with God, yes. right, the more likely we are to hear him mm -hmm. as he speaks. That's yeah. Yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. that's it. absolutely important to be connected with God. And we'll talk more about that as we wrap the program yes. in a little bit. But uh, stay with us. More and better us to come. Thanks, guys. Great talk. Yeah. Okay, when is the last time your spouse had a big win. Maybe she made the executive team at the office, or maybe he nailed the presentation at the conference. Maybe you both handled a situation with one of your kids in a, in a positive way. I mean, how often does that happen where you step back and say, well, that was a good parenting moment. Now, ask yourself this, how did I respond to my spouse's victory? How did you respond? Did you, did you give him a big hug? Did you give her a high five? Did you take her out to dinner? Maybe you didn't do anything. A lot of people don't do anything. They focus almost exclusively on the failures and they just expect the wins. So researchers from UCLA, they actually studied four different ways that couples respond to good news. So there's four ways. Number one, some couples were openly and excitedly talking about this big win. The second group of couples, they were supportive, but they were, they were quiet. The third group, they really didn't have much of a response. It wasn't good or bad, it was just sort of flat. And then the fourth group, they were actively discouraging. And believe it or not, some people are like this. <laughs> That's a whole nother segment. People with discouraging or unresponsive spouses, they reported lower levels of happiness in their marriage. And I don't think that surprises anyone listening or watching, correct? I was very surprised by one of the findings. People with quietly supportive spouses, they also had lower measures of marital happiness. How about that? The health of your relationship depends on your commitment to celebrate your spouse and their accomplishments and to do it in a very clear, direct, open way. So the next time there's good news, look, celebrate it, right? Do something. Maybe it's a special meal, maybe you bring flowers, throw a party, make a poster, do something that's gonna make your spouse feel like you think they are a big deal. And in the end, if you celebrate your victories, you'll be doing, doing more than just encouraging your spouse. You're going to be setting your marriage up for happiness, contentment, and even more success. As you can imagine, today's show was a pretty difficult one to tape. It dealt with real life and death, and we want to thank Kara and Eric for their courage and transparency in sharing their yeah. story. As you know, marriage is full of all kinds of stories. Some of them are so amazing you'd love to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. And others are so heartbreaking you're not yeah. sure that you're ever going to be able to move on. 
but as Eric and Kara are learning, it's through moving on together mm -hmm. at your own pace and with God's help that you find comfort and healing and strength. The key is doing it together. Mm -hmm. You might not know just how to be there for your spouse. It, it could be that simply your presence is all they need. Mm -hmm. It lets them know that they are not alone. Yeah. You know, when Anne went through her breast cancer journey, mm -hmm. complete with surgeries, chemo, nausea, hair loss, mm -hmm. and everything that went with it, it was hard for me to know how I could help. And it usually boiled down to simply my presence and holding her close as often as I could. His presence, his warmth meant so much during those times. But you know what, I thank God that Anne had a much more significant presence throughout her journey. Almighty God was holding her close in a way that I never could. And while I was her small R rock, her real security and peace was found in her big R <laughs> rock in Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Knowing him personally, having that open two-way dialogue with Jesus, that made all the difference, especially during those dark, lonely nights when the rest of the house was asleep. He was there. And you know what? He's there for you too. You can have that relationship with Jesus. Just open up to him. Maybe you're not sure exactly how to do that. All you have to do is ask him. Ask him to come into your life, to forgive you of the wrong things you've done, and then you'll begin a growing relationship that gives you the strength and wisdom to live the kind of life that God created you to live. It's a simple prayer, really, but one that will have a profound effect on your life and on all of your relationships. Yeah. If you'd like someone to help you get started in that kind of relationship with God, or simply pray with you for whatever you might be going through, the number on the screen is our 24-7 prayer line, and it's there for you. Thank you for joining us for this very special program. And remember, with God, there is always hope mm -hmm. to become a better us.